Okay, hello and welcome back to our Dragon Age Inquisition, now that the rules at playthrough. Brought to you by William Ellison, Master Rosarius, and GameAnyone.com. Hello Bunch, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little late today. But this week I should be back on the regular schedule. Hopefully. A few interesting days around here. So let's head to the Storm Ghost. That's a very good song, O'Neill. It's at least good. <laughs> it got cut off for some reason. I was going to a storm coast, wasn't I? Yes. Red Water. Interesting name. When I can bet this is it. Yes. Okay, I don't see any reason to change my party's layout for this quest. Yeah, this is Red Templar stuff. No one has any particular, other than Colin, maybe. Personal stake. Or Cassandra, possibly. We cannot. Uh, Inquisitor! In the affairs of the Red Templars. Great. Fuck me. In the bastard retreat, I could see a shimmering. L16. Bye. 
bastards. Okay, let's go and deal with the rook. I wonder if the if the dragon went that way. That would be awful. I'm heading into dangerous territory. Over well, 16 Templars, they are my level. Let's try this anyway. So. Ah, será. <laughs> they didn't, they were not calling the elf. They were just saying Shea. So, Ninith, Nabalin. This place gives me a headache. Okay. Guess if mages are hurting. This is something interesting. I want to know how Corypheus managed to convince Templars now. No, he didn't convince Templars. I'm really interested in how. Yeah, Templars go so corrupt. Because if you remember Meredith. She used the red lyrium, but she was a still fanat a fanatical anti-mage. But uh, it appears Samson or the the red templars have dug in here. I'm certain Queen Anora would appreciate having them removed from Ferelden's shores. I don't really care for Queen Anora. But killing red templars is my duty. But what I was saying is that uh, Mary it was rightly anti-mage, even when she was using red lyrium, or especially when she, was, when she was using red lyrium. Why do the red templars become pro magister? Okay, there it comes. Shit. Our fucking mouse doesn't appear. Bastard. 
That is surreal. The, half my potions got used. I really mismanaged that fight. Let's proceed. Killing them one by one, I turn both of them on me. Seems this is the way forward. Therefore, let's move back. Storm Coast, the port at Derwin's mouth once connected the Dwarven Tykes to the Waking Sea. In addition to increasing trade between the Dwarves and their allies in the Dainter Imperium, direct access to the deep roads meant the diplomats from Orzammar could visit the port without fear of, lo of losing their stone sense. The site thus became a popular meeting place for ambassadors of the two nations. When Darkspawn incursions forced the Dwarves to retreat into Orzammar, the deep roads leading to Derwin's mouth were sealed and the port fell to into his use. At least all reputable use of the port ceased. Bandits, smokers and pirates are known to use the various caves along the storm coast, including Derwin's mouth itself for their own gains. Brother Beans Chantry Mishkola. But yeah, I am truly interested in finding out why the Red Templars are so willing to follow a Magister of the Winter. Well, the behemoth doesn't look good, does it? Especially because we have archers up here. Sure of it. The problem is, if I go for the archers, then the behemoth will come up and basically ambush me cutting off any possible escape well not really I could jump down here fairly easily and if I attack the archers I'm sure the behemoth will start coming up the good thing is the behemoth cannot cross this small hole the bad thing is that my companions are fucking idiots and will stay on this side of the hole Unless I manage to force them to stand their ground and I can attack the archers from here in a clear line of shot. Guys are fucking tough. Holy shit. Yeah, this is not going to do. One archer is. I think my people are level 15. What are you doing? Shit. What happened? She has line of sight, I can see it. 
Ah, the fucking bastards. Freaking uh, bastards. Yeah, that's not going to... they are too tough. I think we will have to risk it. And like it. But we shall have. Okay, let's try to hold the behemoth. And rush these guys. attack anyone doesn't really matter you know what's bad at having Sarah with a corrupting rune I tend to confuse her with the Templars <laughs> That was strange. The behemoth did absolutely nothing. I was sure it was going to ambush me up here. Okay, let's make sure I'm not going to trigger anyone else before I tackle the behemoth. needs to kill his support and if it's only one guy the behemoth is dangerous enough that even one support is an annoyance shouldn't be able to touch me here there they come as I knew they would What are they doing? Okay, they, they are coming here, aren't they? Or maybe not. What is going on? <laughs> they are hiding from me. What bunch of assholes. So okay. you'll be careful when you throw all that fire around, yeah? As long as you're careful where you shoot all those arrows. You magic me, I'll put three in your eye. <laughs> now we can live together in peace and harmony. Alright, what I need to do is jump down here. What I want... Oh, Sarah, the stupid girl. Shit. You see what I have to deal with? Completely stupid assholes. I prefer to lose a little bit of health over this. Okay, there we go. Madness. So tell me this. Are Navarran cities of the dead actually filled with undead? Of course. The mortalitazi lure spirits to possess every corpse buried there. And then what? Let them wander around willy-nilly? Only in the abandoned areas. The rest are sealed up in their tombs, I suppose. Forever? I almost feel bad for them. 
After a time, the moaning grates on the nerves. Trust me. Okay, we need to kill this guy before the behemoth. Holy shit! Okay. They need to come to me. Perfect. Really well. This way, that's the only chance I'm going to get. to come down here, no wonder. Madness. The AI wasn't so fucking stupid. The game would be ten times easier. Intended recipient. My dear Fenarella, how are you? How is your aunt Catherine? My dead girl would never give trouble, I hope. Dear girl, okay. How are your studies? Perhaps you could read me some of the some of this letter to her. Show her how much we are learning. I'm sorry to have been away for so long. I have a duty. Remember when mother was very sick and she asked you to fetch her water and you did it because you loved her? It's like that. Sometimes we have to do difficult things because they help other people that we love. The country is ill and I have to try to make her better. Don't worry, I am not alone here. And now we have special medicine that will make us stronger so we can fight better. So long till the mages are gone and we're safe again. I'll be home soon, all my love and prayers. Fata. So that's a red templar, obviously. Surface dwarves. In our summer, dwarven society is divided into rigid castes with houses that compete for power and prestige. All, but all that is discarded when a dwarf abandons the stone for the surface. Under the open sky, everyone is equal, or so the story goes. The truth is that thousand years of tradition are not easily tossed aside. Even though surface dwarves are officially stripped of their caste, many maintain a hierarchy among themselves 
along the old cast lines. Formerly noble houses are accorded more respect than castless brands who come up in search of an opportunity. The poorest noble dwarf on the surface looks upon the rich lower caste dwarfs with contempt. Upper class surface dwarf society is roughly divided into two camps, Kalnas, who insist on maintaining caste and rank, typically those from the noble or merchant caste families, and ascendants who believe in living or summer traditions underground and embracing life into the sunlit world. Maintaining some tight towards Amar was seen for generations as the only lifeline for surface dwarfs, bringing surface goods to their keen underground lithium and metals to the surface was not only the most lucrative means of making a living, but also a sort of sacred duty, as many surface dwarfs willingly accepted exile and loss and the loss of their caste to better serve their house or patron. In recent years, Many surface dwarfs, particularly ascendants, have branched out. They started banks, mercenary companies, and overland trade caravans. They became investors and speculators in purely surface trade. These new industries have proven tremendous sources of wealth, but are looked down upon by their more conservative kin. For less affluent surface dwarfs, association with a powerful Kalna can open many doors. They can get credit with dwarven merchants and are offered work opportunities by the powerful dwarven merchant guild more readily sometimes than more qualified by less connected individuals. Isn't that the case always? Alright, let's explore the room upstairs. Incidentally, Cassandra, I'm well aware you lied to me. I lied to you. When you said the Mage Rebellion was beyond the power of the Seekers to control, I've since heard your order could have prevented it, but instead led the Templars into war once it started. It is why I left the order, yes. Knee-jerk defense of your former comrades. I quite understand. Okay. Imagine fighting the behemoth up here, it would have been disaster. Maybe if I had managed... no, it's too close quarters. Even if I had managed to contain him on the other side of the bridge. Many of these Red Templars were good men and women once. A shame to see them corrupted beyond recognition. Unsigned journal. The red potion was bitter and turned and burned my throat. It was nothing like delirium I know. There was a hum in my mind. A held note that seemed to course through my entire being. The power it brought was incredible. I felt as if I held all the world in my palm and I could crush it with my thought. Is this what the maker feels? I can all I can think of nothing else but the power now. A taste of the limitless makes it impossible for a man to be content with the ordinary. Why be what I am when I can be more? Yes. The limitless. Okay. So maybe this is the way forward. Shit. So I need to go back to open that door. Great. But yeah. People getting addicted to power itself. Or the rush. That's understandable. I would say. But 
This is why Billy Brooks are overpowered. I have fought that uh, behemoth, not a single health potion got used. Okay. But I fight two rooks. And shit goes into overdrive. Well, I don't like this. Ah, it's broken. Okay. I'm sure I could try to make the jump. More likely than not, I would make it. Unless the game is full of shit. But let's do what the game wants me to. And cross through the bridge. In the second floor. And yeah, two rogues equals seven consumed potions. One big ass warrior, zero consumed potions. Perfect. Balance. But as long as we're not fighting a dragon, maybe I get a cache of potions we shall be okay Nelven statue maybe it's no, a statue of an elf Or maybe they are not actually statues, maybe they are people turned into stone. Great, same bullshit. Two rogues. Let's see if we can, at the very least. Kill one of them. Shit, again. Bastards. Okay, this is ridiculous. Goodbye. Uh, fucking bastards. Alright, at least it wasn't as horrible as last time. And the choke point working against the ranged characters cannot fight from here. They have to rush the enemy. Because they are idiots. Okay, only two. Or three potions left. Great. And no inventory space either. We might have to get out of this place back later it all depends on how much it lasts
Yeah, this seems like a big, big dungeon going forward. Time to go to Sky Hunt, sadly. Let me check. Now, maybe this is the end. Who knows? Let's see. One thing I do know is I'm going to kill that guy from here. No. Or at least attempt to. Well, the aim was true. That combination is truly powerful. One marksman, one shao. And maybe this is the end. That seems like the coast to me. Now, I need him to stand up. So fucking powerful, crazy. Some random archer. There more. Okay, if there is much more than this room, I will have to go. I'll come back later. Shit. broken the Templar's hold here. There may yet be stragglers, but we've dashed whatever plans they might have had. Okay. What do you know? Bentor is full. Well, that is something I truly need to take with me. Let's destroy this. I almost went back at the end of the quest. And the Oz was a shell. Imagine that. Okay! Superior Dalish Boo. Let's destroy something else. For example, yeah, let's see. Has an upgrade. This doesn't. A piece of garbage, yes. That's a crazy O. But now, nah, it's only giving me well, 25% critical chance. Roll. Still look seaworthy. What? Row the boat. Row to where? Fuck. Didn't she say it wasn't seaworthy? Should I try it anyway? Why 
Why would I want to jump into an, an unseaworthy <laughs> boat? Well, boats are not supposed to be seaworthy, but in any event, let me finish exploring. Let's try set 25 critical. Loads of damage is not what I want. Constitution is okay. This one could work. Destroy the tower ship. the boat. Shit. No punch what they did. <laughs> oh sure. But oh I bet there's nothing. Fuck what the hell am I? Dragon Island, that doesn't sound great. I'm going out of here. Goodbye. Dragon Island. <laughs> no, no thanks. No Dragon Island for me. Okay, let's go to Skyhold. Time to ma manage the inventory. <laughs> 